I hope you like boxes, because that's what this is going to be about. Snake is not the only character who carries a box around. All the characters, items, and their attacks have boxes, and you get to see how. So let's get started. Well, their boxes aren't like snakes, but they're used for collision detection. AABB, or Axis Aligned Bounding Box, is a quick way of determining if two entities are colliding with each other. You may have heard something like this called a hitbox, and that's what it kind of is. I'll be using Bounding Box and Hitbox's names interchangeably. Keep in mind that it doesn't handle how they respond when they do collide with each other. The axis aligned part of the name means that the box sides line up with the X and Y axis to form the box shape around something or somebody. So here's the main idea behind it. I'm going to drop some items here. And let's just draw those boxes around the items. Just by looking at them, we can see that the boxes are overlapping each other, the items are resting on top of the stage, and the items are touching each other. We can do the same thing for Mario and Peach and ask the question, do their boxes overlap with each other or with another box? Well, their boxes are touching the stages, so that means that they're colliding with the stage. It's simple as that. However, there are a few disadvantages of using this method. One of them being that the hitboxes can't rotate. That's right. They are only stuck to have the size to be along the X and the Y axes. So watch Mario as he takes this crate and throws it up into the air. Notice how the size of the box is different as it surrounds the rotated smash crate. The box has to be big enough to have the object inside of it. There is a simpler variation of it that keeps the original size of the bounding box and you don't have to worry about having to recalculate how wide or tall the box is in the air when it's rotated. With that disadvantage, it also reveals that the bounding box is not that accurate. Shocking? I know. If I were to place a capsule here, the two squares do overlap with each other, however we can see that they aren't. A quick recap. The disadvantage is, it can't rotate and it's inaccurate. The main benefit of using this is that it's quick to perform and we can use it as a small test to see if two objects roughly collide with each other. So let's transform this concept into code. Alright, here we are. So far I only explained the concept. There are a few ways to pull this off and I'm going to stick to having a fixed bounding box shape. If the object rotates, I'm not going to recalculate the size for the hitbox. I'm using SFML, Simple Free Multimedia Library, and I'll be doing this in C++. Though I tried to make this not language dependent, so you can do it in Python, Java, or any other language of your choice. If you need help setting up SFML with your project, here's a link to a video from somebody who really helped me in the past to get it to work with my projects, and I thank him very much for that. And the link to the documentation is in the description also, if you want to take a look. So here's the rundown of what I got here. I created a 500 by 500 window to have enough room for my shapes to be in the scene. I created the only two boxes, I only need one to control, which is my block, and the other one that I would like to bump into, like a wall, but I call it the floor here. I made a game loop here so that the window closes whenever the player closes out. Underneath it, I have a series of if statements for getting the player's input, WASD, to move my block, and down here is the main part, the AABB detection function. I call it check AABB detection. I have it down here underneath the main function. For this, I have it as to take in two objects as parameters, two, two boxes, and I would like to check to see if they're colliding. The objective is to prove that these two boxes are overlapping each other, so we need to get the distance between the two boxes and their width and height. In the end, we check to see if the distance between the two boxes are less than the combined width and height then the boxes are penetrating each other. So here's the breakdown. I get the x extents of the two boxes and check to see if they are overlapping each other in the x direction. And I do the same thing but in the y direction. This is a little bit extra. I just want to determine which side of the floor am I hitting it in, or which side of the floor am I on when I collided. Lastly, I return if the X and Y extents are overlapping each other. Both axes have to overlap to be true. 
Back in the main function where the collision checking is happening, if the boxes do collide, then turn both of them blue, or else just have them set back to what their were original colors were. And then underneath is a small snippet of, that basically updates the screen with, you know, the objects. So let's give this a run. So here it is. And I'm just going to start off by going straight down towards the floor. As you can see, it turned blue. And in the console, you can see which side of the floor am I colliding in. So I'm hitting it at the top side. And if I go around, we can see that I'm going on the left side. And if I go down here, it already says the bottom side. And over here, lastly, on the right side. So they turn blue when they do collide with each other. One way to do this slightly faster is to only check one axis. If that axis is not overlapping, then you can ignore checking the other axis. In this case, I check to see if they are not colliding in the X axis, then I don't need to worry about calculating in the Y direction because it requires that both boxes are overlapping on both axes. There is another way to do this with the size of both boxes. For example, the right side of the first box needs to be past the left side of the second box. The bottom side of the first box needs to be below the top of the second box. You can try to implement that method as a challenge. I hope this made you appreciate boxes more. Matter of fact, it doesn't have to be a box shape. It can be a circle too. That can be another challenge for you. I can try to give you the answer through Discord and the link to it is in the description and you should join to get updates, hang out, and share stuff with each other in the community. I hope this helps out. If it did, you know what to do. Please like and comment below, subscribe to see more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next level. Bye!